God is not looking for skilled women. He can endow any skilled woman. He can equip any man. Praise the Lord. And even Jesus, when he saw that one disciples, they were not really equipped for the work, but he trained them. And they became so useful to the assignment that after he left, the gospel is still being preached throughout the corners of the earth. In our generation, we have a lot of people that are not consistent. They are not consistent with this thing. And consistency is a vital force. Is a vital what? Is a vital force. That means as workers, we have to be consistent in our operation. You know, in a, in a, in a, in a workforce, if, for instance, let's take the instance of the, the chorister unit. When you come to a chorister unit where they are not consistent, you did the same different basis. You did this one, so you the other, you know, this one, so you You can't get excellence without consistency. Everybody you see that is doing something that has become good in it, he has been consistent over time. Over what? Over time. And consistency is not a gift. It's a decision. It's a choice. I, I was telling somebody, I said, you can never train anybody to be loyal. Loyalty is a two-way thing. One, it's a choice to be loyal. Two, you pray for the spirit. You ask God for the grace. Because there are some people by nature, by default, they are disloyal. Now, when you are teaching them, what the teaching does is that it postpones their disloyal days. It postpones their what? Disloyalty is in them. Isn't them? But what it does is that the teaching helps you to postpone it. That is, if they ought to misbehave at age two, by the training, they cannot misbehave at age ten. That is, you have succeeded in helping them to behave for eight years. Am I talking to somebody here? But when you say to yourself that I will be loyal, come with a consult. You won't need much training, just a little stuff. You are not. You are there. But there are people that have the seed of disloyalty in them. You will do all the training, they'll still be disloyal. You do all the training, they'll still be inconsistent. The Bible says, see that a man diligent in his work, in his business. He said that man will stand before kings and not ordinary men. That talks about consistency. That is, God expects us to be consistent. In our dealings, in our workings with them. There are members of churches that are not consistent. You see them today, you see them tomorrow. And no church, hear me, no church will do well without being consistent, without the members being consistent, without the workers being consistent. And listen to me, it starts from the workforce. That is, as workers, if we are going to produce excellence, we have. To be consistent. And consistency sir, has nothing to do with feeling. When you serve God based on feeling, you feel like going to church. That's why you came. You are no yes, amen. Paul got to a time in his walk with God. And Paul said, what is it that will separate me from the love of who? The love of God. And the same Paul now enumerated a lot of things there. He said, he now said, is he dead? He now concluded and said, nothing in this life is strong enough to separate me from the laws of the Father. Marriage or no marriage. I have seen ladies that come to this church because they didn't get married or like, oh, a guy, a guy brought them to the church. They were not believing that a guy would come back to them. The guy wasn't showing interest in them. They stopped coming. I don't want too many. But when your serving God is attached to a significant day, your love for God is not yet happening. Can I say something to you? There is nothing that can make you serve this God. There is nothing. That is where my life is. That is where my bread, my strength is my time. That is God is looking for consistent men. Consistent ladies that will say to their church, come rain, come sun, I'm there. I'm where? I'm there. Those are the people God reward with his grace. Now let me tell you something. Every blessings of God comes as a reward. Comes as what? Comes as what? 
Are you seeing what he said? Seek ye first the kingdom of God. And it's what? That is in the kingdom of God, there are priorities. There are what? Priorities. Priority. Once you get it right, everything follows. Everything we just, everything we just align. Show me a young girl that loves God with the whole of her life. And show me a great woman in the making. These were the things I first taught my wife when I met her. I didn't first propose marriage. I first taught her the love of God. I taught her submission. I taught her hier hierarchies. My wife is my wife, but if you want to talk to some of my sons, he asked sir. Our daughter there. End of the examine them. He must ask her. Why our daughter? Before we ran onto the water. And I can still remember those thoughts in Canaan and they were having a meeting. Induction. I call it an induction for marriage. When your heart for God is perfect, there is no misbehavior, there is no misbehavior that will make you stop coming to church. Hello? I thought that, that once we are married, we are servant for God. We are slaves for God. Slaves for who? God. When you come to that realm, no devil can hear you. After this class, this moment, we are going to press this in the pray for ourselves, pray for each other. I see this month of October we are entering. It will be your very month. Amen. I thought your amen will be sound and clear. Amen. That is, you must understand, consistency is a blessing. Somebody say consistency. Consistency. Say louder than that. Consistency. I want to hear your voice like that. Like consistency. consistency. Are you consistent? Are you consistent? How do you know someone that is consistent? Even when there's no money in your pocket, will you still come to church? Even when you feel as if they're big, they decide to come in pain, everything. Will you still be in the option that you're standing and you're just like, you just sit somewhere, tell your leader, okay, let me just sit here and do my own job today. That is consistency. And let me tell you something, God will work consistency. Things will just be happening in your life that you never pray for. Listen to this. People say God is not a respect of anyone. Am I right? Yeah. But God paid special attention to some people. He said, he was talking about uh, uh, Esau and Jacob. He said, Jacob have I loved. Esau have I loved. What did they do? Their mindset. When you value the word than God, you become, you become second class in the kingdom of God. There are classes in the kingdom of God. You did you see God say, I have found David, a man. After what? Talk to me. After what? He lives after my own heart. My own heart. That is David came to a realm where even God had touched of him. Who was David? David was a man that was doggedly committed and consistent. David was ready to risk his life just for God, not for himself. And the question for us this morning can you risk your life for God? Can you risk your comfort for God as a worker? As a child of God, can you risk your excitement for Him? That was what David did. And God spoke of him. He said, I have found David, a man after my work, after my work. He was a dying lover. He was consistent. You see, you can't talk about consistency without talking about love. That's why I said, love is stronger than death. Love is stronger than what? Do you know what that means? That is, even in the midst of death, a lover is consistent. A lover is what? Consistent. consistent. That is my chapel of the first thing that be consistent. To be consistent. Let people not say, we don't know whether I will come reactor today. We don't know whether I will come clearly today. We don't know whether I will be in church today. It's not a good market. It's not a good time. 
Job was consistent. Job was another man that was totally consistent to a point that even God testified of him. God said, have you seen? God was telling Satan, not even the word. He said, Satan, have you considered my servant Job? A man that is consistent, a man that is upright, a man that is steadfast. Job now said, is it not because you are blessed? Him? That is consistency brings blessings. Is it not because you are blessed? Him? A brother was talking about Job this morning. And the Lord asked, okay, go and try him. The Lord gave Job and Satan permission to try him. Job. And Job went through a lot. But in the midst of all that Job was going through, he never cursed God. Job went through a lot. One day he lost all his children. One day he lost the entire empire built. That same day he lost his cattle. Listen to this. His very wife came to him and said, Do you still want to go to meet your righteousness? That is, the wife knew that he was righteous. The wife knew that he was consistent. Now, even your friend knows that you are not consistent. He knows that your heart is not here. You are just coming. See, when you go to a point where your friends look at you and say, Can you be the second pastor of that church? You know you are sad. When you go to a point where even your children know that. We don't say you are happy to die for that church. You are starting. When you come to a point where your friends, your sisters, your brothers say, we don't say this one people put a neck down for that church. You know you are starting. Because Job knew that Job was extremely consistent. That when Job was going through his trials, he she turned and looked at Job and said, Will you still continue in your holiness? In your righteousness. Do you know what Job now responded to his wife? Job never spoke back to the wife and said, it's true, this God that we don't serve himself is not doing anything for me. No, that's how some of you will speak. That's how you'll be speaking with your neighbors. You'll be speaking with those your stupid friends. Now listen, this is what Job said. Job now turned and insulted the woman. He said, why are you speaking like one of those fools? <laughs> the Bible said, the fool says in their heart there is no room. That is in the midst of what Job went through. Job was a righteous man, but he still went through trials. But after he said to that woman, why do you speak like one of those fools? He now turned to God and said, for I know my Redeemer. What? That is, in the midst of his trials, sir, he was still consistently consistent. Yes, he wasn't just consistent. He was consistently what? He was consistent in his actions. He was consistent in his appearance. He was consistent in his utterance. Some of you, little trouble you go through, you are starting grumbling. I don't know what it happens there. Without prayer, without prayer, without prayer. If you are not doing something, I will go look for one back some year. Go. Somebody say, Go. God is looking for people he can boast of. And for God to be able to boast of you, you must be consistently, consistently in with them. You must come to a point in your work. Let me say, I'm not serving God for what He will give me. I'm not serving God for cars. I'm not serving God for clothes. I'm serving Him because I love Him lovelessly. I love Him in the midst of love. My life is for Him. When you come to that point, if you read the apostles, you will not see why they were called the apostles. Some of them, they were beheaded. Some of them, they threw them in tie ox oil. John, the be below, at the highland of Bathmos, he was thrown inside a drum of oil, boiling oil. You know those granite oil you use in boiling your fish? They rated it over 100 and something thousand degrees. That the oil was already evaporated. They now threw John inside. Why did they throw him inside? They threw him inside because he was standing for the validity of Jesus Christ being the Lord. Am I talking to somebody here? And the Bible said when they threw him inside, they all couldn't find him. Nature was suspended for a man that was consistent. Am I talking to somebody here? Nature was suspended for a man that was consistent. Why? Because he loved God so much. And he said, even though he slain me, though, I will yet trust him. 
Are you consistent? Walker, are you consistent? Choir, are you? See, I have been in choir from the age of 11. Until tomorrow, till I see Jesus, I'll still be singing to him. Consistency. It will decorate your life. It will make you different from all your mother's children. <laughs> Hello. Be consistent. That is to be an outstanding one. You have to be consistent. Don't be moved to what people say. Anybody can say anything. They said things about Jesus. The same John now stood up and said, The things our eyes have seen, the things our ears have said, the things our hands have handled, the word of the life that we preached. The word. You have to be consistent. Pray for the prayer. Lord, show me. I want to be consistent. I don't want to be up to the tomorrow now. There are some of you, it's only when you are in church that you fall, you see yourself as holy child of God. When you are out of church or nothing, you have to be consistent in working for Him. You have to be consistent in practicing the covenant. You have to be consistent in maintaining divinity. Hello? Yeah, you have to be consistent. The grace to be consistent is released upon you now. Yeah. Two, building capacity. To you, as a worker, you have to be on a daily basis, build capacity. It takes a young man that has built capacity as a person to be able to set this sound. Hello? Is that making sense to you now? Even though you are a cleaner, build capacity. 